Hi, I'm Jason. And I'm Keith. And we discovered something very interesting about the new 7800 gimbal made by Kame TV, specifically with this stand. We thought that we could probably mount this onto a car and basically kind of have a car rig, but with the stability of a gimbal. And this is how we're going to achieve it. So you take one of these regular uh, suction mounts here. You can take off the ball, the ball head and the rod, and it leaves you with something like this. And what you do is you unscrew the foot. All right, keep going until it goes all the way out. And this part comes off, allowing you to change the bottom into a suction cup. Now we have four of them for each side, so that should give you a pretty, pretty hefty hold onto the gimbal and the stand. So give us a second and we're gonna assemble this real quick. All right, so we are outside and we got all the suction cup car mounts here. So what we're gonna do is first get one set put on. Yeah, make sure it's nice and secure. Now the reason we're putting on one at a time is because these things don't have, you know, it's pretty, pretty sharp, so we don't want to scrape off any paint. What we're gonna do is gonna set this here, slot that in, and then we go ahead and place it on here. Now you notice that there's a wobble, but that's not gonna be a problem because what's gonna happen here is when we put the next one in, in theory it should stabilize it by, um, by having this extra suction cup here. So we'll get this one on, make sure it's nice and flush to the car as best as possible. As you can see, it already doesn't move. Uh, Keith, could you hand me that other one, please? Thank you. We finish off here with the last one. Again, make sure all the suction cups are flush. It's not going anywhere, so, got it. Last but not least. We now have mounted a gimbal to the car. Now, obviously that these things are not gonna hold so well, so we got some tape here. We'll go ahead and tape the handles down to the rod or to the stand. Be nice and liberal with this one because you don't want your gimbal to fly off the car. Okay, that should do it on that side. And we'll go ahead and tape the other side and we'll, we'll see how this goes. Okay, so we've got the gimbal taped on. The gimbal is turned on. We're gonna adjust the camera before we take off in the car. But again, as you can see, I am literally pulling with all my weight and it's not going anywhere. It is sturdy. So, here we go. <laughs> so far, it looks like it is nice and stable. As far as I can tell right now, the gimbal does not seem to be freaking out. <laughs> It doesn't have that nervous jitter that could sometimes happen when you're making it do something crazy. Yeah. <laughs> now would not be the time, especially if a cop comes by. Hello. They're like, "What the hell's going on?" I'm stuck here. All right. As right now, we're on a very uneven. Uh, terrain here and as you can t see the gimbal is actually still maintaining a nice flat movement. Now I do see a little bit of a side wobble just because of the nature of the movement so we're gonna take a look at the test footage right now and uh, see see what we got.
Uh, all right, let's do one more forward run. Going at a nice, probably 10 miles an hour, less than 10. All right. Pretty nice. Still holding. Again, there's still that side wobble. We'll have to take a look in a second. Okay, so as you can see, the gimbal actually held on pretty nice. Now, from what I observed, this parking lot has a really uh, pretty substantial div towards the side. And when the car would lean, this thing still stayed nice and straight, nice and stable, which is great. However, I did notice that there was a little bit of a side wobbling movement. Now, I don't know if, I don't think the gimbal would have been able to compensate for that, but we're gonna take a look at the test footage and we'll also show it to you and see what it looks like. Um, you might be wondering why we didn't go out into the streets. It's because right now we're probably about to hit rush hour from, from the afternoon traffic of everyone getting home. So we will have to try that test at a different time. Okay, so the first thing you want to do when you're taking this thing off is we're going to take the gimbal off first. So Keith, if I can have you come back real quick. Grab the gimbal. All right. And pretty much what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to push down these levers. There's a little lip for the suction cup. You simply pull that up. All right, that's one. That's two. Now to avoid scratching your car, make sure you grab a hold of this middle handle here. Detach, three. That's it, you're ready to go. Hi, this is Joe with Media Design Imaging. We're going to be doing another car test with the KM7800 updated gimbal system. We're going to be using the Gecko suction feet here. So this one is already attached to my hood. And then we're going to put the stand here. Yeah, it's not going anywhere. ready. Okay, we have our gimbal with our GH4 and 14 to 140 lens. And we're going to put that on the stand and then grab some tape, tape that down. I'm actually going to have this here. It's our controller for our Silencer Pro autofocus system. Make sure to go up and down the handle. And you can just to give it a more secure fit. On the mount and taped, you can actually turn the gimbal on and make adjustments accordingly. One thing to note while you're mounting this to your car, make sure you're not actually putting it in the way of your driver's seat or you won't be able to see where you're going. Okay. Driving again with manual focus. No ring. No stabilizers because they didn't actually stabilize. <clears throat> what else did we do to the camera? Well, I guess we just set my own manual focus. But that didn't, that didn't show, so the camera actually been helping out with that perspective. Sorry, dude. <sighs> yeah, right here, right when we're here, the footage is really smooth. 
Skeletal. Sorry, I get, keep, keep getting caught on these lights. Channel 5's Pothole Patrol? Yes. They were at my, uh, they were in my hometown yesterday. Oh. Yeah, they were parked on the side of the road. <laughs> Looking for potholes on Mills Avenue, or Mills Road. This guy thinks we're going to follow him or something. We don't let it go all the way down this time. I think that's the stop sign we're doing. Now we're driving back. What a lovely day to drive around the neighborhood with the collective $2,000 duct taped to your hood. <laughs> Actually, the 280. 280? Almost 3,000. Oh boy, I wasn't nervous. <laughs> $3,000 on the hood. I think that's more than people spend on their car in general. Seven hundred seven eight zero zero on the car hood. <laughs> Shout out to Mitsubishi. <laughs> Not. All right, so we just got back testing our DIY gimbal car mount. Again, the suction cups that we used are the fat geckos, the dual ones, and as you saw, I couldn't really yank the whole thing off the car at all. Um, so, you know, definitely we think it's safe for now. But if you check out our car footage, when the gimbal, when the camera was facing away from the car, there's definitely a lot of no noticeable vibration and shake, uh, especially with all the potholes this season. Now, take a look at the footage when we reverse the camera and it's facing into the car. The vibration and, you know, sway of the camera, you don't really notice it at all. So I find that kind of interesting that having it face the car, it actually produces some uh, usable footage. That being said, this is still kind of a test in progress. So uh, as we figure out how to eliminate the vibration and the sway when the camera's facing away, we will definitely relay that to you.